I've been teaching environmental education for about 25 years and doing citizen science pretty regularly as a technique for about the past 15. And I find it's a really great way to match helping teachers teach what they need to teach, uh, giving the park good information and making it fun and interesting for the students. So in this project, uh, we were working with the Gray Hills Academy out on the uh, Navajo Reservation and it was a great opportunity to connect with one of the tribal schools here in the region. Because the, the, the tribes have such deep connections to Grand Canyon through history and through time, it's a great way to connect the youth and also learn something. They really have seemed to grasp and latch on to this idea that there's real-time science that they can take part in. And so it's been fun just seeing that spark. Something that they're going to be involved in and that this is real science, this is hands-on and this is what scientists do. We've got anemometers where they measure the wind speed, laser thermometers that they use to measure the temperature in different locations. We've got measuring devices that they utilize to do transects in lava tube caves. We also encourage the kids to utilize their senses when they're out there. It's not all about technology. The students just feel more engaged because they know we're keeping the data, we're taking it seriously. So right now we are at Kings Canyon Elementary School um, on the Hopi Nation looking at different kinds of plants for determining levels of air pollution and ozone damage. The carnivores project here at the Thonautam High School was a meeting of the minds between us and the National Park Service. The purpose was to monitor carnivores. We had a team of individuals including myself and a couple of science teachers that decided this would be a perfect project for them because it, had, it was a hands-on project and provided them an insight into basic research studies of, of animals. The program that we'll be doing with the kids here today is called Life in the Extreme. So the big question they're exploring is how can animals and plants survive in such a stark landscape? Right now it's very important for students to be exposed to science in general, but also exposed to getting outside. Nature is a good thing. We want to learn about our environment and what's around us because ultimately that's what keeps us alive. We need this planet to live. It's vital that students now are having opportunities to learn how they can help their community. And this particular group of students, we are looking at climate change because their community is right on the ocean. And so we've had opportunities to discuss how maybe the beach is going to respond to a rising sea level. What's going to change if water temperatures raise? The kids were very engaged. They loved the hands-on part of it. And once they got into learning what the information was about, they were able to talk about it. It ties in to a lot of the lessons that we've been planning for our after-school program, particularly the science-based linking and tying it into things that we're already learning about our environment. Being able to see all the concepts that you learn in the classroom from a textbook, from reading, actually happening in real life is really important to kind of solidify your own understanding. And a lot of the comments that I hear on this program and other programs are students being like, hey, this is just like something we've read about, or like, this is a definition that we already knew, and like, pulling on that background knowledge to actually see it happen in real life, because we don't live our lives in textbooks, we live them, you know, in reality. I think you have the type of kid sometimes that doesn't want to connect to science in the classroom. I think by us going out in the community and letting them experience for themselves, you know, the animals, and the movements that they take, the type of behavior that, that animals uh, partake out there, proved to be very valuable for them as well as ourselves. They took away from the project what kind of questions to ask. I encouraged them to, to be like that in everyday life because, you know, that's the biggest skill that we can teach these kids. Kids who were quiet opened up and were fascinated by what they were finding. Being able to see the look on their face when they found something, what is this, what is this, and they loved it. 